Now, when we talk about Fatima the Zahra, we typically think, yes, she's a role model for our women. I disagree. She is also a role model for other men. For we also see women a certain way. Why do we have to take this and plaster it to the women? What about us? Do we see the women that way? We should address them through the eyes of our role models. So men should also see Fatima the Zahra with a clear understanding of who this woman was and what is her representation. Now she lived on this earth for a very short period of time as we know. Because she was the embodiment of enormous beauty. And Allah mentions in the Quran, Am nas ala ma atamu min fadli? Are you jealous? Allah says, of Am nas, are you jealous among mankind of what we have conferred on people? We especially chose Ibrahim and his family. We chose them above all. Are you jealous? Karbala, one of the qualities of Karbala is the exemplification of jealousy. They couldn't stand to see their family representing humanity. They couldn't stand seeing their beauty. They couldn't bear it because they are chosen. Look, this is nothing new in our community here. If there is a few of us in the community here who outshine everybody in akhlaq, in beauty, we love them. You can't avoid it. Even the enemies love the Prophet. They used to go behind his house just to hear him recite Quran. But during the day, they would throw rocks at him. But they couldn't stop loving him. The same quality goes to this. That when you are very successful in the way of Allah, people are envious, people are jealous for many reasons. And that's the system of Allah. The system is Allah says, I make some of you to excel others. Not so that you should be jealous, so that you should see them as a potential of what you should be doing in competition. Positive competition. When you see the Prophet so great and you love him, the Prophet says, come to me, be next to me. I'm not a, repul I'm not a repulsive person. I'm an attractive person. I'm a magnet. Come to me. I am like that Ark of Noah. If you climb it, you will be saved from this flood that is coming. But if you stay far, you will drown. So yes, we should be attracted. But the ones who love the truth, the ones who love good qualities. And by the way, here love is not only among the lovers of Ahlul Bayt. It could be an atheist, it could be a Christian, it could be a Jew. They can fall in love with these personalities more than many of us that claim to love. It's not a matter of decision when we put a title on our foreheads that yes, I'm a follower of Ahlul Bayt or I'm a Shia or I'm a Muslim and therefore I'm more qualified. Maybe you are, maybe you're not. But there's no guarantee for that. There could be someone outside the fold of Islam who has such a passion for goodness that when they do recognize such qualities, they gravitate in that direction. That's human nature. But what makes you so certain your pathway is the best? Answer? I said, my pathway is the best because my pathway possesses the best role models in the world. Nobody can come close to the role models we have. Try it. SubhanAllah. Even within the Muslim Ummah, we've got other schools of thought who consider certain personalities within the school of thought as good people. And they even use them as means of getting close to Allah but they don't possess the immaculate, impeccable akhlaq to represent mankind. The lovers of Ahl al-Bayt are the only people in the world who have grasped on to the most logical, rational answer to the core principles of why we're being tested, which is to hold on to the best role models. Because when you do that, you are safe. So Allah says to the Messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, وَإِنَّكَ لَعَلَى خُلُقٍ عَظِيمٍ Indeed, you have the best moral conduct. وَإِنَّكَ لَعَلَى خُلُقٍ عَظِيمٍ لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنًا لِمَنْ كَانَ يَرْجُ اللَّهُ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرُ وَذَكَرَ اللَّهُ كَثِيرًا Look how beautiful the Quran addresses this core principle. 
Believe me, when I was searching and I was studying other religions and I said, how do I know my school is right? My religion is right. How do I know this Islam that I'm professing is right? And I said, nobody has role models as impeccable as we have. Everybody has mixed the good with the bad. They've got the good, but they mixed it with the bad and they put a jumble bag confused it as Imam Ali Islam says the destruction of the human race came when good was mixed with evil when it got mixed it became confusing this is why the Quran is known as Al Furqan it takes the gray and makes it black and white the Prophet is Al Furqan when he comes near you you know where is Haq where is Batir the Ahlul Bayt all the 12 Imams and their family the ones that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose they are the Furqan because you will notice that their transactions immediately sifted the good from the bad because they are so pure just like the Quran and the Quran even addresses itself what we revealed in this Quran is an intercessor. It is your attorney. Shifa on rahma and a mercy for the believers. And the career to the man, Allah cancels it. That yes, prophets do come as men. And therefore we think that men have been endowed with this superiority. Quran never addresses that. In fact, in that ayah, الرجال قوامون على النساء, when Allah says the man is a few degrees higher, not for status, is higher in the economic status of being the provider. That doesn't make you better. So subhanAllah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is addressing this. And therefore, you find Allah is bringing Maryam as the connection of prophethood and the connection of imamah is a woman again that when Jibreel descends with the eye of Tathir the 33rd verse of the 33rd chapter Allah say, Jibreel says what hum fatimatu wa abuha wa ba'luha wa banuha sallu ala muhammad wa ala fatimah the zahra sallallahu alayhi was the connection of prophethood to imamah that's how great she was when she was young,